if you are a vegetarian, well, Brazil is not the country for you, honey. Really not. <laughs> they sniff up. So like, you know, like up, up. Oh, oh my God. That's the most disgusting thing what you can do in Hungary. I ended up in so many awkward situations where I, <laughs> I almost kissed half of the family of my boyfriend. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Suzy and I post videos twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday. So today I would like to talk about my experience as a European, as Hungarian, when I went to Brazil. What are the differences between the two cultures? What are the things which were super weird for me? And which were the things which were weird for them, maybe as well, I'm gonna talk about it. Anyways, um, I have a list here, like pretty big, one and a half pages, just to, you know, not to forget everything. Because that's what happens all the time. I wanna talk about something and if I don't have a list, I'm like, for sure I left out half of the topics that I wanted to talk about. People in the whole country don't really speak any other languages. I mean, Spanish is very similar to Portuguese and they, um, they speak on a way that, just an example, uh, we were like, it was a few years ago that we were on the beach and next to the beach there was like a small, um, like a small restaurant, a seaside or beachside restaurant or what is it called? Um, so anyways, there was like a Spanish speaking family there and what they were doing is that they were like reading the menu card and they asked the waiter in Spanish and the waiter answered in Portuguese. So as the, the two languages are very similar, they managed to like understand each other and you know, to, um, to, to get the order and to eat. But other than that, they don't really speak English or German. I mean, I say, and it sounds weird, like, why would they say, like, why would they speak German there in Brazil, like, other end of the world? But, like, around the Second World War, there were many uh, families who left Germany and went to, um, to Brazil, especially to the southern Brazil, so the, um, the state Santa Catarina, and the state below that is mainly lived by like third generation, yeah, second, third generation Italians. So, um, next topic would be the greetings. So the greetings, um, I would take it into two parts. On one hand is like about the kiss, like where to start to give kisses to the cheek and how many you should give. That actually varies from state to state. To state. <clears throat> there are states which start on the right side, states on the start on the left side to, you know, give a kiss or something, you know, uh, when they like meet someone. Um, and it can also vary how many kisses you give. Because it can be that you give only one or two or three. It also depends on the state. So I think it's like, that's a tip what I would give for you if it's the first time for you to go to Brazil to check uh, in that region, specific region where you are going, where they are starting and how many kisses they give. Because I ended up in so many awkward situations when I, <laughs> I almost kissed half of the family of my boyfriend. On the lips, just because I was wanting to start from the right and they started on the left and then <laughs> oh, okay, I don't want to kiss you, I'll just give me a hug, you know. Um, and the other thing, the second part would be about the um, saying how are you. So if you meet someone in English, of course, you ask, hey, how are you? So there, they ask, hola, to the bay. And then the answer is normally to the bay, and that's it, only to the bay, which is all good. Um, but the difference between the two cultures of like Hungarian culture and um, 
Brazilian culture is that here in Hungary, if you ask how you are, if I make the question to someone, how are you, then I really want to know how that person is and that person will really tell me how they are. So like, if you ask from a Hungarian, how are you, they're going to tell you that I feel bad, I feel sad, my dog died. No, don't do it here. Only if you really want to know how this person is. And <laughs> I remember like, uh, I think it was like the first time when they, when we meet, um, like physically and not just virtually, but like the first time when I went to Brazil, that um, my boyfriend's mom asked me how I am, like to the way. And then I asked my boyfriend, like, hey, what should I answer? Should I, should I say really how I feel or just what should I say? <laughs> and then he said, just say it to the way and smile and, and then it's all good. <laughs> so another topic would be about food. So what you need to know, if you are a vegetarian, well, Brazil is not the country for you, honey. Really not. They eat red meat, cow meat, which they call carne. They eat it like three to four times a week. Like, really. And uh, I think it's called churrasco. That's the grilling, I mean, like to have a barbecue. And um, so what they eat is like, you know, next to the uh, meat itself, they eat a lot of beans and there is like a food which is like, a, it's similar to pork stew with rice and it's called feijoada. So that's like black beans and pork stew mixed with rice. Um, then what they also really like, it's called coxinha and it's like, um, it's similar to a chicken croquette, I would say, and it has like a teardrop shape, but it's this big. So it's like a big teardrop with chicken in it. I believe they also have some other fillings, but I tried the chicken ones and that was really good. Um, for desserts, they have uh, something called ponche queijo, which is like bread of cheese. It's similar to the pogacha in Hungary, but it's like 80% cheese. And the best one is when you like uh, use different kind of cheese to mix it together. That's really delicious. Um, then comes my favorite, which is the brigadeiro. The brigadeiro is like a, a mix of condensed milk, uh, cacao powder and butter. They also make the white version of it, um, which is basically the same except the cacao powder. So because the condensed milk is like white, it's gonna be like a creamy white color. And they also make uh, like a um, mix of this chocolatey one and the, the, the normal white one. When they mix the two together, I think it's called like Casarino, casa, something, something with casamento, which is married. So like little married ones or something like that. I will put it on the screen. I don't remember properly what's the word for that. Uh, but anyways, they are the best things. I bet that I'm going to have like um, on my wedding night a brigadeiro cake. Yeah, I think that on the beach side, God, that will be awesome. Then I will talk about drinks a bit. Um, they have a famous Brazilian alcoholic beverage, which is called Caipirinha, which is made from cachaça. Uh, cachaça, I would say that it's similar to the palinka in Hungary. Um, so they mix that with ice and lemon juice. And by lemon, I mean the lime. Sorry, they, they use lime only. Lime there is the cheapest thing ever. And this normal yellow lemon, which we have here, like for the lowest price ever possible, it's super expensive there in Brazil normal lemon is super expensive which i have no idea why because they can produce it so 
it's strange but anyways they mix cachaça uh, ice sugar which is sugar from sugar cane and they squeeze um, lime on top of it um, but non-alcoholic beverage related is um, the Guarana so Guarana Antarctica is the one that I was living on that juice is oh my god that's that's the best thing what I ever drank in that country um, so it is made from the of course from Guarana and what you need to know about Guarana is that it's um, it has like a similar kind of effect of uh, like a tea or coffee so it gives you this energy boost but after that you will have some low times so to say um, and because of this it's in some ways like addictive and you want just more and more and more of it but I don't know whenever we had like main meals like lunch or dinner for sure I was drinking that like best when it's almost ice cold oh, that's the best non-alcoholic beverage ever there what you need to like look out for if you are looking for Guarana you need to buy the Guarana Antarctica because there are like two or three other brands which also sell Guarana drink but I think they have from Fanta and they have like another one which looks exactly the same as Guarana Antarctica like almost the font of the like labeling is like almost the same as what in Antarctica uh, but those ones are not that good no I tried them but it has I don't know it's like miles and miles away from what in Antarctica that's the best yeah tried it how the family works I mean when you are there doesn't matter like they if they know you for a long time or they just meet you for the first time they are going to be so nice to you and they are going to like hug you and give you kisses all the time and like i don't know they are just such like a positive energy boost of people that it's just really nice and i really want to implement it into my life more because you know i'm hungarian and hungarians are pretty negative and depressed so yeah regarding growing up there as a girl um what is a big difference between europe and uh, latin america i believe in general but especially brazil is that here in hungary on an early age early age like 18 plus you get a job get school university whatever you move on um, and if you start to date somebody the couples are both of them are hungarians they will most likely moving together after a few months or like after a year then within the next year if everything is still working you know then they are gonna get engaged they will get married they will have a child so within like two to three years you will have a new family in hungary versus there in brazil the girl lives with the parents until they get married and i'm like what when i heard this the first time i'm like really like what why don't you move out so it's just very traditional type of raising a child there if they want to move out for sure they 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 have the chance to move out but they also don't really want to leave the family home you know so they are more like connected to the family on a way that they spend way more time together than we have here in in hungary the the main difference is that how fast you leave the family home and another thing is like how fast you get married from the point of meeting your boyfriend there is one uh, very funny 
difference between the two cultures is blowing your nose so <laughs> oh my god this this is like such a ridiculous ridiculous difference that so here in hungary you you are a bit sick you have a stuffy nose you take a jetty <laughs> you take a what is it handkerchief tissue you get a tissue and then you just you know blow your nose you are i don't know in the office you're walking on the street you are using the public transportation you blow your nose there if you blow your nose it means that you are rude and you disrespect the people who are around you so what they do is <laughs> they sniff up so like you know like up up oh oh my god that's the most disgusting thing what you can do in hungary so it's like completely the opposite here if you sniff up you're disgusting you're a pig you have to blow up and it will happen and my boyfriend said and an, another brazilian guy and multiple people actually from brazil that when they came here especially if they came in the flu season they were like seeing everybody blowing their nose and once they were like you know sniffing up <laughs> for sure there was a hungarian who was like here's a tissue take it just blow it out please just blow it out <laughs> it's just so oh my god so here you blow your nose and you don't sniff it up there you don't blow your nose maximum if you go to the bathroom blow your nose and come back or you sniff it out which is no thank you so what i did is when i had to blow my nose i ran out from the i don't know living room or whatever we were i went to the bathroom to blow my nose so just to blow my nose I went to the bathroom because I didn't want to disrespect anybody. <laughs> oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Um, then, one thing which is like super great in Brazil, and we should have it here in Hungary or in general in Europe, is that um, you have here parking spots for handicapped people there you have parking spots for handicapped people and for elderly so there's a sign i'm gonna put like a, a photo of it i think i have it somewhere that it's like a old man with a that walking stick <laughs> this blue black blue background white man with the stick uh right next to the handicapped uh parking spot and the other thing is that when you go to a store, I believe, or may, yeah, I think they have like in banks as well. What they have there is that they have priority lines or priority cashiers. Yes, these are cashiers dedicated only for people who are elderly or people who are with a child or multiple children and it can be used also by pregnant ladies so if you're pregnant if you have children around you if you are elderly i'm not sure what's the like the the age from that on you can use that kind of cashier but i think it's really nice that they prioritizing these kind of people so for them it's not such a you know for us it's like Come on, I just go to the store and I buy something. But imagine like if you're pregnant, like especially when you are like around the end of your pregnancy, like everything hurts, like your feet is swollen, your ankles are swollen. It's, it's a struggle to, you know, to stay, I don't know how much time in the line to, to get your stuff and so on. So I think this is really nice and I would like to implement it here in, in Europe because that's really fun. Another topic will be, uh, yeah, security. Well, security is not the best, unfortunately. 
in Brazil. Um, what I know is that the southern you are in Brazil, the more security you have. Like, I mean, on security, like robbing or pickpocketers or like anything like people with guns on the street, for example. Um, it's quite sad that once um, I was in a barbecue party and what else? Um, so anyways, I was on a barbecue party and someone asked a question who was not robbed in his life? And I think there were like, like a pretty good amount of people, like 15, almost 20, like a lot of people. And it was me and one guy who is Brazilian. So the two of us were the only ones who were not robbed in their life. And this is just so sad. And I really don't know like how the government could make it better, but this is this is a big 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 difference between Europe and and Brazil because here you can walk on the streets alone as a woman like in the middle of the night anyways um so that's that's like a, a big issue there so if you're pretty pale and you go there for sure they will stare at you especially in Hugh that's what happened to me like People were like staring at me, but it's not in a way that you are scared that, okay, they are going to attack me or something, but it's like, I was like, I don't know, like a unique alien in their world, I would say, because especially if you go to a city, a smaller city where they don't really have foreigners from Europe or like they have foreigners, I don't know, from other uh, Latin American countries, they have brown eyes, brown uh, hair, nice olive skin. They're like, okay, foreigner. But if you go there blonde with pale skin, they will like, hmm. I mean, it was weird at the beginning, but then after some time you just get used to it. Um, but yeah, they are gonna stare at you if you are like me. Like, <laughs> I really like, it's impossible for me not to be seen right at the moment when I enter a room that I am not Brazilian. Like, they see it, like, who are you? Even if you speak very, very good Portuguese, for sure, they, you will have an accent which will sell you out, you know. But anyways, if you like have the lucky position to learn Portuguese on a master level and you are like, like someone who spends, let's say you spend a lot of time with Brazilians and you, you pick up the, the, what is it called? The accent, yeah. So you pick up the accent, they look at you and they see that you are not from there. Uh, they have a lot of fruits. So they have these beautiful tropical fruits, exotic mango and papaya and pitaya and whatever, I don't know, whatever they have. Like uh, they have coconut, like different type of coconut. They have the green coconut, they have the, the brown one. Uh, they have like my favorite is uh, mango and they have like four types maybe even more types of manga and I'm gonna put some pictures here and there to see which I took like in <laughs> yes um, so <laughs> I went to the grocery store um, so when I went to the veggie and fruit section I was like amazed like Oh my god oh my god this is so beautiful so first of all the presentation of fruit they put them in a really nice way organize them together it's not like here you just throw it there and half of it is rotten already who cares someone will buy it maximum will put a label on it that it's for sale there 
if they see like a tiny tiny bit of like i don't know default on the fruit they are going to take it out they are going to take it out immediately so they like i don't know i think they shine it or i don't know i don't know what they do with it but those fruits look so good i think there were like four type four or five type of mango mangoes mangas manga mango whatever uh there then coconuts um they also had like grapes and and plums and pears and so on but those are like you know you can get it here in hungary as well those were not really my exciting part but these um really tropical food looked a lot really tropical fruits those were the ones i was i was just like dying like they have the um, abacachi i think that's the name avocado so here you can buy an avocado which is of course it's imported from spain or greece maybe portugal but mainly spain so it's like this size what you have here there it's this size it's like huge um plus they also have a lot of bananas they have these tiny bananas which it's like this size and it looks like a big banana has been like pressed together and it's it has like a completely different taste than the, like the standard banana what you can hear buy here in europe um it's more sweet uh what my very 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 biggest most i don't know what's the word but my favorite fruit is the how is it called in english mamo Pap papaya papaya yeah it's called papaya and mm, god they have like from this size to this size like it's huge it's the size of a pumpkin you know that long one it's gigantic oh my god and these these fruits are cheap it's super cheap there and i'm like this to the basket this to the basket this to the basket i i, I loved it i was oh my god so 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 in love with that um and another thing is coconut oh my god that's so tasty that especially on the beach yeah on the beach mainly you have the these mini stands where they have like a, a a freezer but they have all this green coconut in it and then uh you can buy for like pretty cheap like very cheap in my opinion price a coconut where the lady or the man who works there like has some special machine to make a hole on the coconut and then you get a straw they give it to you and then you drink it but you can get like a good amount of fresh coconut juice or like coconut water like really quickly it's super refreshing it tastes amazing the ones you can buy here like usually like in a can or in a, these um, paper boxes oh no come on those have nothing to do with coconut but anyways i just love the fruit <laughs> i'm so addicted to food i was eating which is weird i think it's um it comes from my region where i was born and raised in hungary is that i eat uh fruit with a sandwich and there they were like looking at me like like what what are you doing like why are you <laughs> why are you ruining the fruit with bread and i was like that's how i enjoy it that's how i like it you know and i think um my boyfriend's mom said that her grandmother was eating fruit like this or something like that so anyway she was german and maybe it's a thing in germany i don't know i'm not sure um but as i like talked about it with with other hungarians they were like also like it's weird um so i i think it's just only a specialty of my region 
but anyways um that would be all about the cultural differences roughly two and a half to three months i spent from my life in brazil which is like absolutely crazy even to say it that i had the privilege to go there but anyways if you have the chance go there please educate yourself about these cultural differences not to kiss anybody in the mouth like i almost did a few times <laughs> um but anyways if you would like to hear more about my experience in brazil or anything specific please leave it in the comments bar um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you subscribe please also hit the the bell icon and click all on this way you are going to be notified every time i upload a new video so thank you so much everybody for listening to me for being here for staying until the end of this video i wish you all the best